Okay, well, I want to address a couple of issues you brought up in your latest video. First of all, it is a straw man. Um, one thing I want to impress on you is that you are playing it fast and loose with your categories. That is, you've got social categories. But the boundaries between these categories are pretty ill-defined, okay? So you define anyone as being a socialist who is not 100% capitalist. That means that in the continuum between someone who is fervently free market capitalist who believes that the government has no role to play in the economy and someone who is purely socialist that believes that government should run everything and there's no room for private market, private enterprise or profit. In that continuum you are drawing an arbitrary line and calling everyone to one side capitalist and everyone to the other side socialist. And <laughs> I'm sorry, but you need more categories, okay? Because I don't fit in with your assessment of, of what socialist means or what it implies, okay? Um, so first of all, you know, I would consider someone to be socialist in the regard that you put it in that they would reject capitalism. All right, so I am a liberal, and as a liberal, I don't reject capitalism. I don't reject socialism. I see them as complementary processes for um, structuring society. Okay. Um, so you need more categories. In the meantime, it is building straw man because you can say, well, here is a socialist, and socialists believe such and such. Okay. Well, not all quote unquote. A socialist believes such and such, okay? You need more categories. You need to be more precise, okay? <laughs> in the meantime, it is building straw man because you can fill in the definition with whatever you want, okay? Um, so, uh, let's see, another thing I wanted to say, a critique of pure reason, that's uh, believing that there's an absolute. Uh, you know, liberals do believe in the critique of pure reason, we don't think that to posit that there's an absolute truth out there or there's an absolute reality. I happen to believe there is one, but still, we receive all our perceptions subjectively, okay? There are methods we can employ in order to gain more understanding about the absolute, but we have no direct access to it. Everything we know and understand about the world has been impinged on us through our senses. We can reason about it, but we have no direct knowledge, no direct experience of the absolute or reality, okay? And that is the core difference, okay? Now, when someone is confronted with a conservative who starts raising these questions about absolute values and things like that, we question where these values and the biases that come into play in determining what values are, okay? Now, <laughs> now we want to understand the subjective elements to the basis of their assessment of absolute values, okay? And, and that's very important to understand the source, the source of objective measurements that are being made about values, okay? Because there is room for disagreement there, <laughs> all right? <laughs> so whether or not they, they exist, there are various ways of measuring them, okay? There are ways that we can measure objective value, price is one, there are other ways too, okay? But we have to agree on the measurement criteria, we have to agree on the methods for validating those before we can go off and say this is absolutely true. They're true according to some precise methodology for determining their truth value, okay? Not because the absolute world exists according to you and therefore what you say about it is true, okay? <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Um, you need to establish a more rigorous methodology for determining truth and for proving your assertions, okay? <laughs> it's as simple as that. Um, I, one more thing I thought I would throw in there. You know, this, um, shall we say, conservative notion that uh, minimum wages cost jobs. I, you know, 
that's implying only first order logic. It's not looking at second order effects, such as uh, people having more disposable income to uh, contribute to the economy. Now, we know that conservatives are very good at first order logic, but the economy is circulation. When you give people more disposable income, they will contribute more to the economy. They will put more money into circulation. It has a multiplying effect. So minimum wage, despite your claims that, well, people will not hire, that there's this trade-off. Yeah, but when you give people more money, there's, as a whole, there's more business. So in a microeconomic view, yes, you could say, according to first order logic, that minimum wage might cost jobs. But if everyone does it, there's more money in circulation, meaning there's more business, more profit for a business to make because there's more money in circulation. Okay, So I don't buy entirely this argument that minimum wage causes unemployment. Okay, I, And I think it's been beaten to death by free marketers because they only employ first-order logic to the problem. So that's all I'm going to say for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.